Today, as we read from the Bible, I want to read from the book of Matthew. Our scripture lesson is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So let us listen to the words of Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea. For this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary his mother. Falling on their knees, they honored him. And they opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. What is surprising to uh, uh, many people is to learn that the story of the wise men is not part of the Christmas story. Uh, we, in uh, the modern church, you know, we have our nativity scenes. Now think about what's in a nativity scene. We have a stable. Uh, we have Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus laying in a manger. Uh, we usually have a couple of angels. Uh, we have a few animals. And we have three wise men, right? And so we've put all that into uh, the stable scene. Well, the only, the only account of the wise men is found in the Gospel of Matthew. I've just read it to you. And if you look carefully at what Matthew writes, you find out that this did not take place at the immediate birth of Jesus. And there's a couple of clues. Uh, first of all, in verse 11 of the reading, we are told that the uh, magi or the wise men entered a house to see Jesus. Not a stable, a house. Uh, the other thing that, that Matthew says that kind of tips us off is, uh, as the story continues, I read down through verse 12, and the part of the story that we read tells us that Herod, who was the king of the Jews, was uh, really quite upset to find out that another king had been born. I mean, after all, he was the king. And so he told the wise men, he said, now when you find out where uh, this Christ uh, is, then you come and tell me because I want to go and uh, worship him too. Well, of course, that was a ruse. He wanted to go kill him. And so at the end of, of our reading in verse 12, uh, the wise men were wise to that, and they went home another way. So they tricked Herod. And if you go on and read Matthew's account, that made Herod angry. And down in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 2, we are told that Herod sent soldiers uh, to Bethlehem to kill the baby boys, now get this, two years old and younger. Because verse 16 says, according to the time that he had learned from the Magi. So did you notice that? He killed boys two years old and younger. 
according to the time that he had heard from the Magi. So we actually have a couple of years in time lapse here from the birth to this story. Uh, one other thing, it doesn't really have anything to do with that, but just, just to kind of uh, show you how we, we can grow traditions and think that they're really Bible when they aren't. Uh, in, in, our, in our nativity scene, uh, we have three wise men, right? But if you notice in the story, Matthew doesn't tell us how many wise men there were. He says there were three gifts, so we have assumed that you got three gifts, you have three men. But that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so we don't know how many wise men there were. And the event took place a couple of years uh, after the birth of Jesus. Uh, they are called, in this translation that I read, the Common, Common English Bible, the Magi. Some translations translate the word Magi. Some translations translate it wise men, which is usually what we call them, the wise men. Uh, well, the word magi means scholars of astrology, philosophy, and religion. So if one is a scholar of philosophy, religion, and astrology, uh, I think we could call them wise men. So that's typically what we call them. Verse 1, Matthew tells us that they came from the east. And biblical scholars believe that that is referring to Persia, which it, that is modern-day Iraq, which I think is, is kind of interesting. Now, like a lot of Bible stories or just ancient stories, uh, there's a lot of mystery in this story, and a lot of questions can be raised uh, as we look at this story. But what I want to do this morning is really just raise one question. The question I want us to consider is, what is Matthew trying to say? What is the point of this story? And I think what Matthew is saying is that wise men from another culture, another nationality, and another religion came to present gifts and to worship the Christ. Now, we've heard this story so many times, we don't think anything of that. I mean, you know, it just, uh, it's just part of our uh, Christian tradition. And so it may be, again, a surprise to some to realize that, that what Matthew is saying is really pretty controversial. Because what he's saying is that foreigners came to celebrate the birth of and life of Jesus. Uh, the Jewish people during the uh, first century, you see, they had a certain concept of the Messiah. And what it really boiled down to is the Messiah was their guy. You know, he, he was their guy. Uh, they believed that the Messiah would come from the lineage of David, which, of course, Jesus did. Uh, they believed that the Messiah would be the ruler of Israel and would restore Israel to greatness. And they really believed that the Messiah was going to usher in a golden age and Jerusalem was going to kind of be the center of the world and uh, bring in the kingdom of God. But they had a very nationalistic view of the Messiah and the kingdom, and they thought it was for them. And uh, they didn't really have an idea that it was bigger than them. Now, what Matthew is saying is, hey, this is bigger than us. Uh, we, have, we have people coming from Persia to celebrate Jesus. As a matter of fact, uh, Matthew emphasizes this throughout the gospel. He starts the story out telling us this, and he ends the story telling us this. In chapter 2, this story, the story of the wise men, is saying that non-Jewish people were excited and celebrated. And then at the end of the gospel, we have in the very last verses of chapter 28, the last chapter, Jesus giving what we call the Great Commission. Jesus says, go make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and go teach them uh, everything that I've taught you, and I'll be with you forever until the close of the age. So that's uh, so. So the, he bookends the story. The beginning of the story and the end of the story is to say, "This is big. This thing is big. It's bigger than just us." Now, when Matthew wrote this uh, gospel, we believe uh, most mainline uh, scholars believe it was written in the '80s. And so a lot of Gentiles, non-Jews, were coming into the church at this point in time. And so this would have been a a great encouragement to them, uh, that uh, that the kingdom of God, the Messiah, is for everybody. Well, I think this story also has something to say to us as well. I think the story is a good reminder to all of us who follow Christ that the mission that we have as Christians is big. That this is big. That this is, this is universal. The Messiah is universal. The kingdom of God is universal. That Jesus is bigger than our race, our nation, our social class. That Jesus is bigger than our understanding and our opinions. In other words, what this story reminds us of is that we are called beyond little thinking and being self-centered. This story reminds us that Jesus is for all and that the kingdom of God is international. Everyone is welcome, is what the story is saying. There are not any second-class citizens in the kingdom of God. There's an old song little children sing, and you've heard it. The words go like this, red and yellow, black or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And that song is expressing uh, what this story is expressing, that the wise men remind us that Jesus is for everybody. So I'd like for you to take home a couple of thoughts today. The first thing I'd like for you to take home with you is that you are welcome. Whoever you are, you are welcome. I don't care uh, about your DNA. I don't care about uh, your genetic stamp. You know, it doesn't make any difference about your, your nationality. It doesn't make any difference about your net worth. If you're rich or you're poor or someplace in between, doesn't make any, any difference about the baggage that you may have in your life. All of us carry baggage. I don't care what the baggage is. Uh, this story is reminding us this thing's big. Jesus is for everybody. You are welcome in the kingdom of God. And this, this church is a welcoming church. Uh, And I I praise God and thank God for that. I don't know how many times in my six-plus years here I've had people say to me, you know, this is a welcoming place. This is a place that people come in and they, they feel it. They feel welcome. And that's why we have so many people come back week after week. And, and I want us to be that way. Because, you see, the church, the local church, is an outpost of the kingdom of God. And so the way the kingdom of God should be is the way we should be. And so I want you to know that you are welcome. We are glad that you are here. And we want you to be here. Okay? And the second thing I want you to take home with you today is that the people you know are welcome. That could be your neighbors. That could be the people you work with. It could be members of your family. They're welcome. Now, the reason I emphasize that is they may not know that. And the only way they're going to know that is if you invite them to come. A lot of people don't feel comfortable in church. They don't feel like they're welcome. Maybe it's because of some things that they've done. 
Uh, maybe, maybe they think that we're walking around here with little halos over our head. Well, I know that's not true. But, you know, some people think that. And I'll tell you, for some people, it is a real psychological barrier to come through the door of a church because they don't feel welcome. They don't think they'll be accepted. And the only way that those folks are going to know that they are welcome and to break that psychological barrier is to come. And when they come and see and experience, then they will know that they are welcome. So our story today is a story that this thing's big. Jesus is for everybody. The kingdom of God is for everybody. And all the God's people said, Amen. let's pray.